One and a half years ago, I showed you my favorite art books. And since then, I've seen new exhibitions, I tried new styles, and I got a lot more books. Let me show you eight of my favorites that I think you might like as well. We have three categories, books about special artists or art movements, then inspiring books, and also helpful art books. Let's dive right in with this absolute treasure. It's about the Art Nouveau movement and called Ver Sacrum. Let me explain what Ver Sacrum is real quick while we flip through this book. During the development of the art style Art Nouveau at the end of the 19th century, a substyle emerged in a group in Vienna called the Secession. One of the internationally most well-known artists of that group was Gustav Klimt. And their group also published a magazine on a schedule and that magazine was called Ver Sacrum, Latin for Sacred Spring. This book is the collection of those magazine illustrations, written entries from well-known writers of the time, woodcuts, graphics and more at different time periods of the publishment of this magazine. Every few years there is a short essay explaining what is going on in the movement at that time. As always, people left, there were artistic differences, people came and ultimately it ended with the beginning of World War I. One thing I'd like to point out is the outstanding quality of these prints. What kind of magic is this? I can read the articles with my magnifying glass. That's just some superb printing quality. The next book is about an artist from the Art Nouveau era as well with a unique style and you probably know him. It's Alphonse Mucha. Fun fact, he was also a contributor to the Vienna Secession, although he didn't reside in Austria. I was looking for a complete edition of Mucha's works, not a best of. His style is such a unique thing and all of his works are recognizably his, but still vary a lot. I want to have a full collection book as a back catalog for creating Art Nouveau frames, being able to study how he positions his subjects, which decorative elements to use, and so on. It's a relatively new addition to my art book collection and I have yet to read the whole thing. Out of the available books about Mucha, if you are looking for a complete edition of his works, this is a good one and the print quality is also good. The only repetitive entry uh, from my last art book video is this one. I just wanted to remind you all that this book exists and Joaquin Soraya lives in my mind rent-free. His paintings are just the most beautiful things you can imagine and the way he depicts light is still astonishing to me. Now let's talk about inspiring art books. It's a large category, but let me begin with this masterpiece regarding the collection of works in one book. This is the catalogue corresponding to the exhibition of the same name, Femme Fatale, that was in the City Gallery of Hamburg, Germany last year. And guys, this exhibition was a big deal. The catalogue is even available on Amazon and it includes all kinds of motifs regarding the femme fatale, the demonization of women, the allure of the forbidden, the juxtaposition of lust for and condemnation of beautiful women throughout time. The exhibition was good, sure, but the catalog? Let me tell you why it's so special and why I highly recommend it, even if you don't speak German. This catalog is in German. This book makes many art books about specific artists for me unnecessary because it features most of their works that intrigue me. For example, I like John William Waterhouse, but, but really only his depictions of mythological scenes and not enough to get a whole book about him. An artist I would like to get a whole book about, but it does not exist, is Jean Mammon. And in this collection, there are 12 of her most impressive works, which is better than nothing. She's unfortunately not well known. I don't think I'll read the articles. I will simply use this as a collection of very inspiring motifs, reference pictures, and some of my favorite artists' work. 
there are 330 color illustrations in there, so I think it might still be interesting for you as well. The language barrier certainly didn't bother me with this book. Un tour de France en affiche. Can you tell that the silly little 13-year-old me chose Latin instead of French in school? I don't speak a single word of French, but this book is uh, completely in French and I still enjoy it quite a lot. It is a collection of travel posters. Travel posters are from the golden age of travel and usually they, if you are able to find a book about travel posters, it will most times be categorized by decade it originated from. This book, however, is categorized by regions of France. All of these travel posters are for France. The different styles and times are represented and I do love the variety of the posters and yet you imme immediately know what it is, an advertisement for a magical place. I definitely want to create travel posters for imaginary lands or fantasy cities as well. I think it's a fun concept and these will be the most helpful source of inspiration and for studying the style. I got this book in the museum shop of Musée d'Orsay in Paris when I was there with my sister. The museum shop doesn't sell it online, but it is on Amazon. I finally found it. If you want to be able to read your travel-related book, I'll give you another tip, one that I don't own yet. It's been on my wish list for more than two years and at some point I'll just, I'll just get it myself. It's quite a big book uh, from a German publisher called Taschen and it is called The Grand Tour, The Golden Age of Travel. It's an English, German and French multilingual, all in one book. And it doesn't only have traveling posters and not just from one country, but it covers travels all around the world, how people traveled. It has lots of colored illustrations, um, often colorized. And if I ever get it, I'll show you on this channel, but it might be another interesting find for you. Let's talk about another inspirational book about fantasy maps and literature maps. It's called The Writer's Map. This book explores maps as a tool in literature. It looks at origins of literacy maps, why they are important examples and explorations of different authors, and their magical dreams that they dreamed up. It features so many maps from throughout the ages. It is certainly an inspirational book and one for fans of maps and map making, and the print quality is good. We continue with helpful educational art books, books where it is about you making art yourself and giving you tips. The first one is a book by a well-known pastel artist, Dawn Amazon, and this is called Pastel Innovations. If you watched other videos from this channel, you might know that I am not a soft pastel, but an oil pastel enthusiast. But I found that the described techniques work in different mediums as well. And this is a book that helps you to create more loosely. It encourages you to try new techniques. And from the first page to the last, it is full of helpful information and creative prompts. The cover is also one of the prettiest works I have ever seen. I do love Dawn's approach to pastels and to use as many helpful techniques as you can in order to achieve the result that you want and in order to communicate what you want to say with your piece. A very gifted artist indeed. Since my last art book video, I also found a passion in bookbinding and acquired this book about making handmade books. And what a collection this is. Just like the Pastel Innovations book, from page one, this book gives you idea after idea after idea with many different uh, levels of expertise. I mean, the first 20 projects or so don't even use glue or scissors. It's just about folding books and working with the patterns that come out of it. For me, this book bridges the world of bookbinding and the world of book arts. It will help you see bookbinding as a tool to voice your thoughts and messages, to repackage it and deliver it in a new way, 
you never even thought about before. For me, it did a whole lot. And if book art are even remotely interesting to you, this is a book you will definitely appreciate. Elisa Golden, well done. This book is an absolute treasure. I have one more book. That book focuses on paper art. It is from Keith Finch and it guides you through different designs and constructions of pop-up art. Literal paper pop-ups. And what I love about it is that you have all of these punch boards. You can punch out the different materials you need and really work in this book and make it. I don't think I can ever get myself to punch it out, but it's still the most impressive visualization and hands-on approach I have ever seen in a book about pop-up art. I couldn't believe it when I found this book. I didn't even know something like this existed. And if you ever are looking for a reference book about different techniques of building paper pop-ups, this is the book you should get. As the book continues, the elements it, it, it describes are also getting more complex. Pull and push animations, there are rotating mechanisms and many more interesting things. Truly a one-of-a-kind book that I can't believe I found and got my hands on. I hope this was inspirational to you and you found some books you want to purchase. I have an important final message though and one more crucial tip on how to go about researching new art books you want to purchase. First off, please support your local bookstores. By now, most of the local bookstores around me have an online shop system. I can sit at home on my computer, purchase the book, order it and two days later max it will be in the bookstore near me and I can go pick it up. They make it very easy to support local bookstores now. I did still provide affiliate links because some of these, uh, not even my bookstore could order, they are just very special finds. And if you click on those, at no cost to you, I will get a little extra from your purchase, if you purchase something. It will help the channel grow and means a lot to me. And the final resource I already talked about in the last art book video, but I want to share again because I, I use it all the time and it is so helpful. It's archive.org. It is an absolutely free online library. The books that are out of copyright, you can go even download those. And the ones that are still in copyright, you need a free, no spam, no nothing subscription um, account and you can borrow the books for one hour. They have almost everything and more. Which one of the books I showed you is your favorite? Or do you even have one of these at home? Please let me know. I love to talk about art, art books, art supplies, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.